all right everyone uh, hope you're well and you know uh, welcome to another part of, of the session uh, for uh, from microsoft learn student ambassadors uh, my name is usman aslam and i'm a microsoft learn student ambassador for microsoft and i'm a co-manager for mls islamabad and i'm an aws educator ambassador for amazon and today's session is all about getting started with microsoft power automate uh, we'll be going through, you know, what is Power Automate, how can we use it, and what is the actual benefit for, you know, people who are learning, who are getting to uh, learn more about, uh, you know, the automation tools. So a little bit about myself. I'm a tech enthusiast, author, columnist, and strategist. I've operated in tech, TEDx, uh, AWS Educate, IEEE, and I'm a writer for the startup and .NET Foundation member. And uh, I'm a researcher at Livingston Research. And I, and yes, of course, I'm a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, uh, part of the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador program. So, uh, you know, just to, you know, clear the air, I am a guy who, you know, is focused on, you know, uh, you know, gaming, uh, who loves to learn about the latest technology trends, and I, I'm, you know, a tea and coffee addict. So, uh, today's session is all about how uh, Power Platform works. How what it uh, what uh, what are the different power platform tools, the common data services, connectors, and AI builder, and of course power, uh, a proper tour and you know a few a few examples and a proper demo. So uh, you know when we talk about automation, we normally think uh, you know of automation as you know something as you know like uh, you know like robotics. Like when you're trying to, you know, uh, like uh, a robot that is automating something or, you know, something that is, you know, making our task easier. So, you know, in short, automation is all about reducing the human effort. But when we talk about automation, it's just not, you know, limited to, you know, um, to, uh, to just robotics. It's, you know, it comes in business applications and in different softwares and so on. And, you know, uh, we are living in that area where uh, we uh, uh, where there's a lot of usage of cloud computing platforms and you know Azure is a big uh, big trend in this regard and you know uh, but despite of all that we really do need uh, automation tools that help us to oversee the tedious tasks and we and to maintain that quality of work that we have and of course we need something that requires little human effort because human effort uh, reliability you know varies from time to time but not uh, but it's not the same uh, when we are talking about uh, in terms of uh, you know uh, performance wise in uh, for machines or software and again less work and more comfort and the big, big example of you know um, of automation comes into the in, into the place is you know how Intel and Ryzen processors are automated this is the image that you see over here is basically uh, you know uh, this method of how a builder is automating certain uh, ro uh, robotic machines to automate uh, to automate the process of building different processors and chips so this is why automation is a really a key tool and you know providing uh, qu uh, quality quality work and removing you know uh, human effort into uh, into tedious task processes so uh, just a little bit about power platform uh, power platforms are certain tools that are focused on low code development in power platform we do not need to learn how to code or we do not need to know uh, certain you know programming languages like C hash or C++ instead we can get started right uh, 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 you know we can get started really directly so uh, there are different types of power platform tools um, there is uh, power bi power apps power automate and power virtual agents so power bi is all about you know analytics business intelligence so if you're a uh, if you're a person that is focused towards different um, uh, different businesses and he, who are a startup and you have certain devices that need to have an analysis of whether they are being used or not. For example, we have Internet of Things. We have an IoT based product and we need uh, people to uh, analyze uh, and we need, uh, you know, an analysis of whether those products are working or not. So instead of, you know, uh, like having uh, human resources to, you know, check that, we can easily have, you know, the uh, the, usage, uh, the usage of Power BI to make our work easier. 
and it uh, and it makes our work really easier and we can you know have this we can have graphs or different uh, and different statistics to see whether which uh, you know which of our product is working and which is not and uh, then we have uh, power apps so power apps is all about um, you know building applications building mobile apps without even learning how to code and this is uh, something like more for you know like uh, uh, building certain databases on the back end and then using those databases or those common data services to build your apps and it's a really unique thing and it's really uh, really useful for people who not have enough uh so who do not have certain you know like um who do not have certain applications or who do not have certain um you know like um tools or resources to build those apps you know instead of having software engineers you can easily have um you know you can easily just go to power apps and build your apps and you know we will get to power automate a little bit but you know i just want to first focus on power virtual agents so these are basically intelligent these this the uh, the line over here that you see intelligent virtual agents it's all about you know how uh, how you can you know automate your um, you know customer services um, you know the big example is our facebook bots when you have uh, let's suppose you have a company and you have a have a facebook page and you need uh, you know and instead of having a resource uh, human resources to you know keep on connecting with the customer over and over instead you can just easily just connect uh, you know you, you can easily just use power virtual agents and connect your um, your bot to that um, uh, you know uh, to that platform or that website and you know uh, and it, it, even in the case of a facebook app you know uh, it, the same the same scenario is over here that uh, you build your bot you teach it what uh, what it has to do when the customer you know asks for something or anything and they guide uh, and the bot does everything uh, as you want it to so this is a really cool feature and uh, you know the common key factors of you know of the power platform are three things uh, data connectors ai builder and common data services um uh, data connectors are basically what you can say as extensions or you know can or taking one service and connecting to another like when you see extensions you see those you know those power extensions where you connect certain two or three devices and you connect it to a main power outlet the same case is over here but in this case you know as you can see it from the symbol over here um you have uh, you know you have one service and you are connecting it uh, to another service and you are creating this platform where uh, you know uh, you're creating this you know system or this you know environment where people can use to make their work easier and then you have ai builder now uh, when it comes to low code development when you are developing certain tools or products uh, or you know certain uh, uh, certain things that help people make their work better you need some intelligence uh, you need to you know add in some intelligence to your work to your workflow so that uh you know detection or you know um you know screening out or anything that you want is much easier we'll get to ai builder in a bit more detail but ai builder is all about giving intelligence to your service this can be in terms of you know build, when you're building an app when you're building an automation services or anything like that and then we have um co uh, common data service so common data service is all about you know where do you want that data to be stored when you are building low code uh, low code development platform you need certain um, you know tools or you need certain um, or you need certain you know databases where you can store all of that data uh, it could be an excel sheet it could be sharepoint it could be onedrive and so on uh, so common data service is totally dependent on that the what we are going to focus on uh, in this session is power automate so power automate is all about automating your process making your work easier and you know uh, reducing the human efforts so power automate is basically an online workflow that automates your day-to-day -day activities or things that may require uh, require a lot of human effort in in short let's suppose you have a service and you want it to be you know uh, automated instead of having instead of hiring 10 to 15 people to oversee it day to day so instead uh, so for that you can easily use power automate 
and this can vary from the different tasks you can you know you could be sending stuff from your laptop to your uh, your drive without even you physically doing it you could have you know a list of people who are viewing your pages you know uh, and have their data stored uh, in your excel sheet or your onedrive or anything you can automate approval workflows using ai builder and so on the uh, the possibilities are endless so uh, we're, uh, so this is going to be a you know a short tour towards microsoft power automate uh, what i over he here have are some screenshots that show uh you know uh, how the platform looks like so when you go to microsoft power automate you will have certain um uh, you will uh, you will be asked to you know sign into your microsoft account and once you've signed in you will have this platform and you will see that there are templates that you can try that you can create your own flow and you can go for you know certain uh you know uh, data connectors or you know you can have ai builders uh, you can build your uh, you can have your ai intelligence built and you can see what kind of uh, d d uh, connectors do you, are you currently using or what kind of connectors do you want to use so uh, first of all are the connectors connectors like i said are basically taking one uh, service and then connecting it to another service in this case we have power automate when we're when we're talking about power automate we are taking that uh, we're taking the power automate service and and connecting it with another third party uh, you know um, application in this case we it could be twitter facebook sharepoint even your own mobile notification and there are different types of um, you know um, services or connectors based upon what kind of you know like uh, packet you have or what kind of uh, method you are using there are premium uh, uh, premium packages as well that you can uh, see later on and then the most important part is ai builder so the fun fact about ai builder is you do not need to uh, learn uh, you know if you're a person who does not have any uh, any knowledge about uh, artificial intelligence or if you are not aware uh, of of the latest technological trends or you're someone who, who does not even come from a technical background so you uh, can easily just use uh, things like uh, uh, like ai builder which uh, microsoft ai has really you know made a really good platform for people to you know uh, add certain intelligence without even uh, without even learning how to code or even learning any back end ai knowledge so in this case you do not have to like uh, learn uh, any you don't do not need to learn any you know specific skill for this you can easily just get started with it right away there are different types of examples you have you know you could easily like if you are taking a survey and you need a survey to you know like detect who, uh, how many people are working at microsoft so you could have you know a business card reader or text recognition and they could easily let you know which person uh, how many uh, in, in all of those list of resumes or in all of the list of data how many people work for microsoft and you could easily just you know um, filter that out using ai builder so the possibilities are really endless in regards to ai builder and again fun fact you don't have uh, to know uh, to know any back end ai knowledge for this and then uh, we have what we have over here is you know the data connectors uh, data connectors to it basically like i said um, what kind of things that your uh, your, your service your uh, power automate service is connected to uh, in this case, uh, I, what I over here have here is uh, I have uh, in this case I have no, uh, mobile notifications. I have uh, my Google Sheets connected to, and, and then my Outlook, uh, my OneDrive, and my Twitter. So I have a lot of uh, things connected, and they even tell me what is the status of the, of my connections and whether they are working or not. If they're not working, I will be notified about it and i can just easily check them so uh, you can uh, connect as much things as you want depending upon uh, what kind of work you're doing so uh, you know just before getting into a bit of uh, you know in-depth examples uh, these are really easy examples for you to try out but you know if you are uh, uh, but before you ever get started towards microsoft power automate there are two important concepts that you really need to remember that is there are two specific things that occur in microsoft power automate one is called trigger 
and the other is called the action. The trigger is something that allows the process to take place. It's a starting point. You need to have something to initiate that automation process. Otherwise, that automation is pointless. And then you have the action. When a trigger is invoked, then an action will take place. Uh, if we talk about, you know, trigger and action in a real life concept, then we can, you know, talk about a gun. Uh, let's suppose, you know, we have, a, a, you know, a plastic gun or a toy gun and we, and let's suppose we just, you know, uh, shoot it or anything like that. And you see that when you like uh, press the trigger, then the action will take place or, you know, the bullet or the, you know, plastic bullet or anything like that will be fired. Same case with the camera. Before you take, uh, you know, a picture, you know, with a physical, with a, you know, uh, with a, uh, with a camera, you need to, you know, first press the button for that, then the action will take place. So in the case of power automate, the same thing happens over here as well. So a few examples, uh, these examples are merely tailored to uh, beginner, uh, to beginner people. And uh, this, these are really easy things that you can try. Uh, without even you know going in depth or anything like that so uh, the first thing uh, what we are going to do is we are going to have uh, an automated flow and this automated and we're going to select automated flow because um, you know uh, schedule flow and incident flow are something that uh, you can easily do uh, later on but just for the sake of an example we're going to focus on automated flow so this is all about when uh, when something is invoked then an action will take place so over here when i click on automated flow i get this prompt that i have to select a flow name flow is basically uh, the automation process so um, you have to select the flow name what will be that automation name you can choose any type of name there are no you know uh, limitations to it and then you have to choose uh, a trigger uh, you have uh, or you can just skip it and then move on to uh, towards the you know you can do everything manually yourself so uh, the first example that we're going to do is uh, we are going to, you know, when we when a new email arrives, then we have to be notified and uh, notified uh, to our mobile, to our target mobile, that uh, hey, a new uh, email has arrived. Say if you have multiple mobile phones at hand and you need one of them to keep telling you, um, you know, the, the updates on that or on specific uh, uh, emails, then you can easily use uh, do that via Power Automate. So when a new email arrives, I'm going to select over here. What's highlighted over here is notifications, and this will be my action. The email is my uh, trigger, and my action is my notifications. So I'm going to type in, you know, an, anything, uh, anything like uh, text that you have received in emails. Basically, when a new email arrives, I will have, I must receive this text that is highlighted called "We have received an email." And I'm going to place the link of that um, that email, um, that way of, of what kind of email are we talking about? So, um, uh, you know, a question regarding that, and this may be that, what kind of uh, link are we talking about? So in this case, what we can uh, simply do is we can, we can take, uh, you know, we, uh, we can easily just sign into our Gmail or, our you know uh, our email or any kind of uh, email that we have and then we can you know uh, uh, copy paste the url on our browser and easily place it on on the link and you can place it any label that uh, if you are you know uh, interested in that so what i'm going to do over here is that or what i have done is that i have written myself a message called hello world and to that specified email and i must receive a notification to my mobile saying that i have received a message um, called hello world or an email so uh, once this is sent i will receive so this is a screenshot from my uh, from my mobile phone and it tells me that i have received an email you see over here that it's mentioned you have received an email the same text uh, the same text that I had highlighted over here in the in the green box over here. So once I uh, click on the notification, I will you know be redirected to the Microsoft Power uh, Power Automate um, 
uh, application you can easily download it on uh, on your android or on your iphone or any platform and once you have that you can you can easily sign in uh, via your microsoft account so uh, once you receive that uh, that email you will be redirected and and over here the link towards that email is specified so when i click on this link i will be uh, you know redirected towards my gmail which shows me that i have received an email called hello world and from the send uh, from the sender as well you know and any detail that you might want to add so if we want to know whether our uh, uh, whether our you know um, microsoft flow or your our automation flow was successful so we uh, we can easily check on microsoft or power automate and we can go to uh, our flow and it will tell us that uh, what has been successful what has been working or uh, what uh, what kind of connections are being used so over here in the red box highlighted you will see how many um, you know box uh, how many uh, you know your flows have been succeeded and how many of your flows have failed if they have failed you will be notified about it how you will be notified of we'll see that a bit later on then we have in the blue box highlighted is uh, uh, the details of the flow that uh, over here when a new email arrives and uh, a mobile notification will be sent to me and it also shows the name of the owner you can have multiple owners if you want depending upon you know what your work is and it will tell us whether it is working whether it's paused or whether it has it is not being used and what kind of or uh, what kind of flow it is and when it was created and then over here in the green box uh, highlighted what you see is, is the connection and the owners so in my, over here my connection is um uh, my uh, my mobile and then my email and I, yes the owner and again you have you can have multiple owners depending on what kind of um uh, you know what kind uh, what kind of specific plan or what kind of specific work are you focusing on another short example what i did is small experiment is how you can uh, you know um you know send uh, data from uh, from your computer and have it uploaded onto your onedrive so over here you see that this is a file called 010.jpg and what i did i placed it onto my computer uh, which was specified to send it to my onedrive so if i go over here you will see that i have received this uh this file uh, this file on my onedrive without even me doing anything meaning that i did not have to go through all the trouble of signing into my microsoft account or going through or opening my laptop i just had to uh, uh or you know just just going into any specific drive all i had to do was just place it into my computer and and it automatically placed into my onedrive whenever i wanted uh, sure there are a lot of processes that do that but this is just for the sake of uh, you know for a beginner's sake that if you're trying to automate certain small tasks so um, there's uh, another thing that i really want to focus on is how we can you know a uh, really hands on live demo so that you uh, so that you as a person who is focusing on um, you know automation or some or a person who wants to automate your processes may have a hands on example so uh, what we are going to do is you know uh, the big example that i uh, i have regarding you know automation processes that are mostly used by businesses is that when uh, when people uh, uh, you know apply whenever a person or some or let's suppose we, i am a person who is applying for an internship and we need to know if that internship is uh, and and we when we and there's a form for it and when we fill that internship form um uh, we uh, and when we submit it we get this email from you know from the ahr or from anyone who is overseeing those the things that um uh, that your uh, internship application has been received and will get back to you and so on so we uh, have uh, so we can easily duplicate this process a lot of people assume that uh, this process can uh, uh, requires certain um, you know uh, difficult softwares or some programming it doesn't need that you can easily do that using microsoft power automate so we're going to focus on that so uh i am just going to switch to my 
um, uh, to my browser. And all right. So basically, um, I have log. I've already uh, logged in into my um, uh, uh, into my you know Microsoft Power Automate. And so what our task is, we are going to duplicate the internship uh, the internship form. Basically, what we are going to do is we are going to have an internship form, and you know just for you know testing sake, we are going to fill it and you and uh, and we are going to duplicate that hr process that process that you know so many large companies can easily do and this can and, and this can vary like you can uh, have it for an event um, or something like that so before even making our flow we need to create our form so i have microsoft forms over here are open you can easily just go to microsoft forms and then you can sign in using your uh, Microsoft account. So um, let's say our internship uh, form will be internship application form company company ABC. So let's place it any gibberish, uh, anything that we want. Welcome to our internship form. Details. All right. So we're going to add a new section and we're going to call it a uh, name required and and over here we we'll just type an email address uh, add selected and let's add a phone number and we can select uh, we can have a new field called um, institution organization or anything like that and you can type in and then uh, we can have um, you know a choice called um, which department for uh, whenever we uh, have this internship right this uh, uh, from companies they ask us what kind of department are they focused on right so we are going to, going to type in you know what kind of department are we focused on so is select our department of interest. and we're going to type in um, engineering um business intelligence and resources and uh, sales sales and marketing all right so i think that's pretty much about it it's basically uh, you know a, a random uh, internship application form and this we're going to do so um so over here we have i think we have everything and you know we don't need to go into um, make a large form at the moment we, this is just for example sake so uh, now we're going to head on to uh, microsoft power automate and we're going to click on create and now let's select automated flow and in internship from ABC, ABC company. So when a new response is submitted, we're going to select this trigger 
and we're going to click on create you can easily do this uh, you know manually as well but you know just for ease of uh, sake we're going to just easily you know click any kind so um uh, over here we need to select the form id form id basically the name of the form that we have selected so uh, you need to make sure that your microsoft form, uh, that your microsoft account is the same so that uh, your form is not confused or you can't select or, or just to make sure you select the proper form so in this case uh, i'm going to select um internship form company abc and i'm going to click on new step and uh, let's say uh, when a new uh, response is submitted uh, we need uh, you know uh, we need the details of that form because uh, you cannot uh, have the you cannot uh, move forward if you don't have the details of that applicant so we are going to click on um, we're going to search for response um, response get response details and the identifier all right company abc and we're going to click on the response id so over uh, over here um, basically what you're seeing over here is the um, uh, is dynamic content dynamic content is basically add on or additional content that you want to see when you're working on your uh, flow in this case uh, this is you know necessary so we are going to click on response id so that we know who has submitted the form and then on a new step we're going to select uh, another action we're going to select an action to let's say send us an email notification uh, send an email. let's send an email send an email notification and now over here is the main thing that we have to do so basically when a new response is submitted it's going to get us the details and uh, we as the hr or the company we will receive that we have received uh, um, you know the application and we don't have to like go to the form and check all of that so this makes our process much easier but in we if we talk about in terms of a person who is uh, submitted the form basically what will happen is that uh, when a new response is submitted uh, we will get the response and they will get the email notification that hey you have received uh, the uh, the email uh, from hr that uh, your or you or some you know automated process that your internship form has been accepted and you will review uh, your internship form so in this case uh, we will select to responders email and over here we are i'm going to select um so for a subject we can type anything thank you for for applying for our internship all right so after this what we're going to do is we, we can type in and type in any gibberish but we are going to be really professional you know so called really professional in this regard so um we're going to type in hello and the name of the person thank you for applying for the internship the internship of our company you have selected and we're going to select over here is department of interest because they have to know what they have selected will get back to you so so for so basically uh, we have completed our form and what we're going to do we're going to click on save and now we're going to test it uh, 
uh, we can either use previous data or we can use the data that we already have. So in this case, we're going to use uh, new data instead of previous data. And over here, I'll perform a trigger action. So I'm going to click on test. And now we're going to fill this form. Now we can, you know, go through the whole concept of, you know, uh, the whole, you know, system of, you know, uh, resigning and all that. But just for uh, for this uh, session, we're going to just click on preview and going to fill this ourselves. So uh, my name is Osman Aslam. And my email is, yeah, I'll, for, for, you know, just for the session's sake, I'll type in any email. But I'm currently signed in over here via my student ambassador's account. But over here, I'll just type in any email. And I'm going to click on phone number, any random number, and institute organization. Um, I can just select, um, you know, uh, tag or anything or anything or any DevTag or DevTag um, solutions or anything like that. And I'm going to click on sales and marketing for now. And, you know, I'm going to click on submit. And over here, I will, you know, uh, let's get back to Power Automate. And you'll see over here our uh, flow ran successfully. So I'm already signed into my Microsoft email. So I'm just going to click on that and see what's happening. All right. So over here, you can see is that uh, we submitted uh, the form. Um, Power Automate notified us of that. And we have received this email saying that, hello, Usman Aslam, thank you for applying for the interest. You have selected sales and marketing. You will get back to you soon. So basically what we have done here, we have duplicated the very internship uh, method that company, use, uh, that company uses in order to uh, respond uh, to, the, uh, to the people who apply for the internship or the, for the job, um, you know, uh, easily instead of having their HR telling them to you know send in the emails so this makes the process really easier and you can easily do this with um, let's say uh, you can do this if they are hosting an event or a session or anything like that so this makes your uh, work really uh, easier and you don't have to hire 10 to 15 people or have an HR department for this so just getting back to our slides The biggest question that people get uh, uh, that you even might have is that what happens if your flow fails? So if your flow fails, and I mentioned that you know your flow fa uh, can fail, and you will be notified about that either. And you and the biggest thing is that if you're a person who is who has a startup or as a company, you do not have to go back to Microsoft Power Automate all the time. So instead, you'll have an email similar like this, and it will notify you that which of your flow has failed. How many times did it fail? And you know, what can you do to you know make it better? So, or you how can you resolve this issue? So, this is a really good way for you to make uh, to you know to avoid uh, wasting your time into you know checking uh, what is working and what is not working. So uh, the biggest thing that people might think that, oh, is this what automation looks like? Is this the foundation of automation? but in reality it's not like this so over here what i've shown you is uh, what i have over here is connection basically buttons and things that we just selected but in reality it's this is it's basically this uh, all of this code that is being compiled on the back end and that is being run over and over again so instead uh, so over here um uh, the first example that i showed regarding uh, if you are receiving, um, uh, how uh, how will you receive notifications from uh, when you receive an, um, when you are sent a new email, uh, when you have received a new email or something like that? So in this case, um, over here you are see uh, you are receiving the backend code. You can easily peek code into this. Uh, we can do similarly uh, with our uh, with our current experiment that we have done. Um, but the point of showing you was this that 
this is all low code development you do not have to type all of this to achieve your automation processes so it really makes your work easier and you do not have to uh, learn python or c++ or c hash or anything like that to you know uh, to scale up your work so in, in short points uh, fun fact is uh, automation can be done with a single push of a button. You do not need to write any code and you do not need to be any tech expert or even have backend knowledge to you know, automate th things or to even learn power automation. But if we you know, just go to, um, if I just you know, uh, show you the code or how it works. So I'm just gonna go back to power automate and we're going to so over here what we're going to do is we're going to uh, you know click on we're going to see the code so basically we're going to click on p code if you're a person who is a tech person who is interested to know how the code works then you can easily uh, click on p code and you will see all of the code that has been running on the back end so uh, this is the really you know cool thing about Microsoft Power Automate. You do not have to um, learn any uh, you know learn any coding for it. It really makes uh, your uh, your work easier. So this is a really cool thing about local development, and it's the same with Power Apps, Power Virtual Agents, Power BI, and so on. So uh, just going back to our to our presentation. So uh, you're going to a uh, big question uh, that uh, you as a person learning about Power Automate will be that where it is used. So um, it is used in business enterprises, large tech companies and the companies, the startups that are focused on business intelligence who want to maintain their IoT devices and so on. And you can easily learn all of you know these things uh, through Microsoft Learn. All you have to do is search Microsoft Learn on uh, uh, on your on your browser and you will be uh, and you can just click on the first link and you will be redirected to this page where you can get all of the resources and all of the all of the courses uh, that are re uh, regarding technologies like azure power apps power bi and so on and there are certain paths and there are certain courses that you can easily take and when you do complete them you get these neat badges and these trophies that you can show off to your employers or to you know to your friends that you know you have achieved something and it's a really cool thing that you know it's like this you know uh, when you learn something you achieve something uh, uh, you achieve something that is really important to you as as a person who is trying to learn about the latest technologies so uh, in term, uh, but uh, but if you are a person who wants to you know become a really pro uh, really profound professional in a certain technology, you can easily search to, uh, for Microsoft certification. These certifications are uh, you know accessible through Microsoft um, through Microsoft Learn, and you can you know just easily check what kind of certification are you interested in. And what you have to do over here, you have to take an exam. And uh, once you pass that exam, you receive a certification from Microsoft that you have you have certain knowledge or skills in that specific technology. And it and there are a lot of technologies, and you can easily learn any uh, and you can easily become a professional in any uh, certain area. Uh, may that be artificial intelligence, IoT, or you know solutions uh, solutions architect work. So. Uh, if uh, if you're ever interested in, uh, to learn more about uh, power uh, power applications or um, low code development, then you can easily connect uh, connect with me on my social media apps. I am easily accessible over there. Or if you just want to talk about tech, I'm easily uh, available on social media. And I would love to hear uh, any questions that you may have regarding this uh, regarding this session or in general regarding power, Microsoft Power Automate. So that's it from my side. And again, if you have any question, feel, uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or on my social media handles. And I'm always writing new blogs about the latest technological trends. So that's it from my side. And thank you so much uh, and take care.